Welcome back to CAD tutorials on Revit Architecture 2012. In this tutorial, we're going to go over um, callouts, camera, views, and elevations. And that'll take us to the end of the different types of views that Revit has. So, first of all, callouts. Um, callout is basically just an enlarged plan view. So, say you wanted to detail your restroom here but you didn't want to do it on your floor plan because of all your dimensioning so you would just come and create a call out and you can even do this in structural if you want to do like a base plate or something like that and there's your call out it's that simple now you can move this around to anywhere you want to get it out of the way you can grab this small deal right here and kink it up create a little leg there if you want to, and if you zoom in on it, you can kind of see where it snaps into place. And once you have that angle, if you grab this one, you can keep that angle. Of course, it'll be straight there, but here. So you can put this wherever you want. And just like any other view, double click on the tag head, and there it is right there. So if you'll notice that my floor plan is at a quarter inch scale down here and my call out is already at a half inch scale and you can adjust that whenever you make the call out you can pick whatever scale you want it to be in already um, and I can change it after the fact now I can come here and say you know what I really want it to be at a three quarter inch scale and there you go and it does not affect your, your actual floor plan and again you've got your crop region with your annotation crop region just like anything else and I didn't show you this on the other one but if you select it I can make the annotation crop region bigger just by stretching it out. And of course I can split the view if I wanted to, which I really don't want to on that call out, but I could. And there's your call outs. It's pretty simple and you can annotate and dimension this just like you did this. You can get into more detail and put it on the sheet at a different scale. Another fun view is um, camera views. So you can do exterior, interior, any camera view you want. If you come up here to your little box right here or even right, right here under 3D view, hit the drop down, you've got camera. And when you put in a camera view, you can see your camera. Your first place pick is going to be where the camera is. And your second pick will be the view depth. So let's just look down this hallway. And remember, we don't have a roof or anything on here, so it's probably going to look weird and this is the depth of view. I could stop the view right here and not even see that back door but it makes more sense to go ahead and go through it and there's your camera view. Pretty simple. You can change your size to crop size uh, to fit a certain area. You can scale it and you can simply if you wanted to just drag this down, drag this over and there's our camera view of an interior of our back door and I can make this realistic which I really don't have any materials on there, but you can see my door materials. So, and I can even render this. And if I wanted to, I can go ahead and create another camera view. We'll do one, and no, let's do it this corner of our overall building. And there you go. Let's go ahead and change my crop region here. And we'll make that realistic as well. And I can render straight from a camera view. Of course, it looks kind of funny because my camera's too close, but that is what the view would be right there. You can change your eye elevation, your target elevation, and you can even show which. Um, uh, let's see, I thought you could show what level. I don't see my level, so I guess you can't show the level. I was mistaken. I can just change it from target and eye elevation. So. Or actually, it's going to be on level one because I drew these on level one. That's what it is. If I drew it on level two, it would be on level two. So there's your camera views, and that's pretty pretty simple. And it even created a camera view under 3D views. I've got 3D view one and 3D view two, and I could rename these and I just call it interior camera and exterior camera 
and now I know what views what. So if I want to open up the anterior camera, there it is right there. Now with these closed, you'll notice you cannot see the cameras here. So what if you want to change the view? What if you want to put the camera in a different position? How do you pick it? Well, there's a couple of ways. You can click on the view and right click and hit show camera. And then now the camera is visible. And I can say, you know what, I want the camera to actually be more on this side. And I want the target to kind of be like that. And just like anything else, that view will be updated to the new camera view. Everything is live and ready. And then same thing with the interior camera. Right click, show camera, shows you where your camera's at, and you can adjust it. So there's your camera views, and last but not least, your elevations. Now when you open up a default project, these are your elevation markers, and they are square by default. You can change them to circles if you, if you wish. Um, these are exterior elevations, and I'm just going to go ahead and delete the south elevation just to show you. And it's going to ask me, do I want to delete the view south and hit yes. Just to show you how to put one in. So I can go to my elevations create an elevation and I've got building elevations and interior elevations of course this will be a building elevation and if you'll notice as I go around the building it automatically is pointing towards the wall it follows the wall so it knows that it's an elevation it's gonna snap it's not gonna let you put one in at a weird angle if there's nothing there so it's gonna stay perpendicular to whatever view if you have a wall at 45 degrees here some some wing coming off of it it'll actually follow that so you pretty much always have it perpendicular to something. Now on a curved wall, of course, what would you be perpendicular to? So in that situation, you'd probably draw a reference plane, and then it would snap to that reference plane. But I'm going to go ahead and drop my elevation in there. Now when you first drop an elevation in there, you see it names it elevation 1A. If I did another one, it'd be 1B, 1C. Can't really remember what what's what. So this is really when you want to go ahead and rename it, and I'll just rename it back to south like it was. So be pretty um, diligent in naming your elevations especially. And same thing with your sections. I try to name as much as I can because in a huge project, this project browser can get pretty big with every detail. You know, every, you gotta remember, this is one model. So every detail you have is gonna be in here. So try to name them, you know, get your naming conventions down. That way when you look at it, you know exactly what it is. Like right now, details here, I have no idea what that would be. It's easy because I only have one detail. So I would name this restroom detail and that way I know that that call out is my restroom so I know exactly what it is so that's it there's your elevation when you click on this elevation line you can see my crop region and you can see these others even and I want this to basically go to the outside I want to encompass the whole building why not that way I can see that my elevation and when I double click it there's my elevation no problem so there's your exterior elevation. Um, like I said, you can click on it and you will see all these different callouts. That just turns on different heads. So now even if you, and that's a good, good point also, that created an elevation off of this that's already in called 5B because I put this elevation head going north as well. So that's another way to create elevations. Now if I uncheck that, it's going to ask, tell me it's going to be deleted, and that's okay. I only want one elevation. Now if I was going to do an interior elevation, which we can do, let's do one of, I don't know, this main room here. So there's my interior elevation. And of course it's going to call me elevation 1A. And you said elevations building, elevations interior. So it does split them up for me automatically. But I could come in here and say, you know, to put four elevation markers in here going each way would take up a lot of room. I can turn on all of these heads and have all four elevation markers showing with one call out. Of course, this is where you really want to be astute, astute in naming your um, elevations. So we can just, you know, we'll call that. Uh, that's south. Oh, see, I can't. And that's another good question. A good point. I've already got south named in an elevation. I cannot use it again. So 
I can call it interior south. And it's going to name that interior south. There's D going this way. We can name that interior east. And there you go. You can see it says interior east right there. I'm not going to name all of them, but you can go through and rename them, and that way you know exactly what elevation is what. And I can open that up, and now that's the inside looking out of that wall. And just like with sections and elevations, I can move windows and doors and walls. I'm just going to put these up here as some crazy dimension, and you'll notice. First thing you'll notice is the cut plane of this view. I'll just show you this real fast. We'll get into cut planes in a minute. Cut plane is on first floor at four feet. Well, I obviously put this above four feet. That's at about seven feet, and that's way up there. So they are lost here. You can't see them with that cut plane. And there is a way around that, and I'll get to that. But what I really wanted to show you was I can move these in an elevation. And if you notice on my front elevation, they're moved. So I can bring them, I can bring them back down. No problem. If I'm in this elevation and I really wanted to align it to the door and I didn't know what it was, I can even use my align tool again. Boom, now it's aligned to the front top of the door. And I can align that to the top of the door. So you can draw, I'm just trying to hammer home the point that you can draw in any view. Any view, which is a great thing, but it could also be a bad thing because you can in, you could grab something that you don't mean to grab and move it and not realize it until you go back to your plan view. So you just have to be conscious of that, but it is a good thing that you can draw in any view. It will help you out a lot. It's not like AutoCAD. Um, that's one of the great things about Revit, in my opinion. So there we have views, um, elevations, cameras, um, sections. These are all different types of views. They're going to fill in right here, just different ways to look at your model. Of course, we've got legends and schedules also. Um, which are also views. I mean, I could, once I schedule this door or this window, I could actually go to the schedule and change the size of it and it will change it in the model because it's, it's part of a view. So you can actually edit from a schedule also and we'll get into that later. So there is all your different type of views in Revit. So go ahead and I would just play around, maybe put in some levels and views and just kind of get used to, uh, especially levels, how to put that in, throw some sections in and just play around with your model and we'll see you in the next tutorial. Thanks for joining us.